so in terms of order, this video is meant to follow the video on the how to for summary statistics table. Um, in this video, we're going to be building a correlation matrix. And for my economics students, uh, this will represent the second table for their data project. So we'll begin with our data. We will be working again under the data tab and more specifically using the data analysis tool pack. If that hasn't been added in your Excel sheet, I have a separate video that shows how to add that. For this particular table, we're going to use the correlation function. And for the input, we're going to select all of our variables. Um, it is important, especially for the purposes of uh, the project, that your Y variable be on the leftmost side of your numerical data. Uh, with the X variables falling directly to the right of the Y variable. We're going to highlight everything. We're going to start with the cell, in this case, B1, and I will hit Control, Shift, right, and down to highlight all the data. Now, uh, we've indicated that labels are in the first row, and they were, and that for our, our output options, we want a new worksheet, and we'll say OK. Once again, the number of decimals is a problem. Um, also, we've got these um, default border options. We're going to go ahead and clean those up. We'll use the Format Painter and just eliminate all of the borders. Also, we'll come in here and take care of these um, decimal settings and, and we'll limit those to reasonable three decimal places. Now this table is starting to come along pretty well. Uh, we still have this issue um, again. We again have the issue of the long uh, data titles. If you clean those up in the original data sheet, then you won't need to revisit those every time you run a table. Um, that is probably advisable. I'll go ahead and, and give these the same reductions that I gave them in the first video. So those are still pretty readable. And we'd like to have the same titles over here. What we're looking at here is a correlation between, for example, median, household income, and total population. So one way to take these titles quickly, uh, the, the new reformatted titles, and to put them up here is to use that transpose function. So we'll hit Control Copy. We'll right click here, say Paste Special, and choose the transpose option. And now we've got identical titles. Um, uh, along the left and over the top, and they're in the appropriate location. But if you look at this table, it, it's still kind of an ugly table. The way that I deal with this in a correlation matrix is to use the alignment option under format cells. So what I did there was uh, I right clicked, well first of all I highlighted the top row, and then right clicked and said format cells. We pull this down to a 45 degree alignment. Um, the text is pretty clean at a 45 degree alignment, um, negative 45 degrees. Uh, the others can be fairly messy, and so we'll say OK. The next thing we'll do is to go ahead and use the minimum command on these, which should tighten things up further. And then we'll come in and uh, give them all a right border. And of course, grab that format and just kind of copy it over. Ah, I see that's problematic. Um, we'll just go ahead and do these one at a time. And once again, come in here and resize. Now this is looking like a pretty clean table. Very readable. I'll blow it up so we can have a better look. You 
Yes, this is very readable. All the decimals are appropriate. Um, what we'll do now is go to the last step, clean it up for uh, taking it over to Word. We'll get rid of the grid lines and hit Control C. And then going over to our Word document, we will go under Paste and choose the Paste Special Enhanced Metafile Options and then center the table up. And now what I'm looking for under this particular table for the project are two paragraphs. The first paragraph will discuss the relative strength of the linear relationships between each of your x variables and the y variables. In other words, we're going to discuss the leftmost column. In this example, the strongest linear relationship is between the percent 16 and older with a job and median household income, and the correlation is positive. Uh, be careful interpreting correlation coefficients. Um, refer back to the packet or to the textbook in order to do that appropriately. You wouldn't want to, for example, confuse the interpretation of the correlation coefficient with that of the slope coefficient from regression analysis or uh, with that of the adjusted R squared uh, from regression analysis. So, um, of course, in terms of the strength of the relationships between each of our x variables separately and our y variable, the next strongest relationship is that between percent with no high school diploma and median household income. So the first paragraph that you will uh, use to explain this table will be discussing the leftmost column. The second paragraph that you will use to explain this table will be discussing the potential for multicollinearity. Multicollinearity um, can be a threat if we see a large correlation coefficient in terms of magnitude between two of our x variables. So we look through the rest of the body of the table for a large magnitude correlation. In this particular case, we can see that the largest magnitude correlation in uh, amongst our X variables is that between percent with no high school diploma and percent 16 and older without a job. Now there's really no surprise there um, that those two are closely related and in a negative fashion, um, but where this becomes an issue in, uh, in a regression analysis is if this correlation is high enough in terms of magnitude, it can cause problems when you try to estimate the impact of each of these variables on your y variable at the same time. So a multicollinearity issue will reveal itself in your regression results um, in that you may have both of these yielding insignificant regression coefficients when in fact both of them are separately important in terms of explaining your dependent variable. How we would handle this if it became an issue is we would run our regression with one and not the other, and then we would run the model again with the other, leaving um, the uh, other variable that is a problem out. And what you would see uh, is that if both of these had been insignificant previously as a result of multicollinearity, they would both be separately significant, or they would both separately in the model yield significant results when not used simultaneously. So um, complex issue I'm aware, uh, refer back to the packet in the textbook if you need more explanation with that. But that will be your second paragraph under the correlation uh, under the correlation table in your data description uh, section of the paper. If you have any questions, feel free to bring those to class. And the next video will be one discussing how to uh, run your multiple regression results and how to get those into Word.